All right then, so now we've seen a few of the basic UI widgets that come along with Flutter. Now let's turn our attention to layout. So one of the simplest layout widgets that Flutter has to offer is the container widget. And it pretty much does what it says on the tin. It acts as a container to another widget or wraps around it. It's basically a convenience widget and it comes along with some properties like margin and padding and color, etc. So let's now try to create a new container widget and see how it works. So inside the scaffold in the body property, I've stripped everything out. So before we had the center widget and some icons or text inside that, I've stripped all of those away. And now the body is gonna be a container widget. That's it. So if we save this now, then we're not gonna see anything on the screen. Nothing happens because like I said, this is just a container for other widgets. Now there's several different properties we can apply to this container. One of those properties is gonna be a color property and that sets the background color of this container. So what I'm gonna do is just set this to be gray and then we'll give this a strength of 400. So if I save this now, then you'll notice the whole background area of this body now turns gray. So when we create a container and it's got no children widgets inside it, that container takes up the full space available to it. In this case, the whole body, the whole screen inside the body. Now, I said that a container acts as a wrapper to other widgets. So what we could do is add on a child property. And say for example, we wanna input some text into this container. Then I could do a text widget and just say hello. And then if I save this now, watch what happens. We get hello up here. And now the container, the gray bit, is only the same size as the widget inside it. So if we don't have a child widget inside it, if I get rid of that, then the container takes up the whole room available to it. But the minute we have a child, for example, a text widget, then the container restricts itself to the size of that child widget. So in this case, the size of the word hello, okay? So that's how a container works. Now, one of the good things about containers is that we can add padding and margin to our child, essentially. And the way we do this is by, first of all, just using a padding property. And remember, padding is the inside space of an element. So margin is the outside space, the space outside the text and container, if you like. And the padding is the inside space. So the space inside the container that is gonna surround the text. And we'll see the difference in a minute. Anyway, for padding, how do we do this? We don't just write a number like 20 or something like that. Instead, we have to use something called edge insets. So edge insets is how we control space like padding and margin inside Flutter. Now we say edge insets dot, and then we use one of these different options, symmetric, and symmetric lets us control the padding across and upwards. So if your up and down margin or up and down padding is the same and your left and right padding or margin is the same, then we'd use symmetric. And I'll show you that later on. Or we can use from left, top, right, bottom. So we specify individual values for the left margin or padding rather, the top padding, the right padding and the bottom padding. So we can approach all of those differently if we have different values for each one or we can use all, and that basically applies the same margin or padding around all sides, and that's what I'm gonna do for now. So let me just say dot all, and then we pass in a value here, which is gonna be, I don't know, 20. So we're saying here, apply 20 pixels of padding around all edges. So if I save this now, we can see the inside space inside the container around the text is 20 pixels of padding in each direction. Now, if I change this to, for example, symmetric, let me do this, symmetric, and press enter. Now, this takes two parameters. We need a horizontal value for the padding across and a vertical value for the padding in the vertical direction. So, let's do the horizontal first, and we'll say that is 30, and then we'll also do a vertical, and we'll say that is 10. So up and down, it's gonna be 10 pixels of padding, and left and right, it's gonna be 30 pixels of padding. Now, the other option was to use something called from left, top, right, bottom. So this allows us to pass four values, one for the left, one for the top, one for the right, and one for the bottom. So I could say 10, 
and then oops 10.0 then I'll do 20.0 then I'll do 30.0 and then finally 40.0 so left 10 pixels top 20 pixels right 30 pixels and bottom 40 pixels of padding so if i save this now it's going to look something like this okay so they're the different kind of values we can use for padding and it's exactly the same for margin so i could now do another property margin and then oops it doesn't have to be in capitals margin and then this is going to be edge insets as well and what i'm going to do is all to specify margin all the way around but we could use this as well if we wanted to or symmetric and i'm just going to say 30 pixels all the way around so if i save this you're going to notice 30 pixels of margin around the container so padding is inside the container and margin is around the container okay cool so that's how we use containers to surround a child widget if we want some kind of container around that to give it some margin and padding. Now, say for example, I wanted to apply some padding to this text widget, but I didn't need the margin and I didn't need the color. Well, in that case, we could use a padding widget instead of the container. So let me get rid of all this and I'm gonna replace it with a padding widget. So inside here, we can have a child property and that is gonna be a text widget, which just says hello. And then also we can have a padding property, which is going to be the same. It's going to be edge insets and we'll say dot all, but we could use symmetric or the other one. And I'm going to say 30 pixels all the way around. Save that and notice we get the text with the padding all the way around. Let me change this to about 90 so it's more obvious. And we can see now we get 90 pixels of padding all the way around. So if you ever find yourself wanting to apply some padding to a text widget or something else then you can use the padding widget but if you need a container with margin as well or maybe a color for the container then container is your best bet because the padding widget does not allow margin we can't use a margin property so if i try to say margin here is going to be edge inset all and then do something like 30 if I try to do this, then you're gonna notice we get a red squiggly line because we can't use the margin property. And the same is true for the color property. We can't apply a color to a padding widget, only the padding itself. So we're gonna see more of containers, more of margin, and more of padding in the rest of the playlist as we go forward. So hopefully now you've got a basic understanding of how these different things work.